right. Hello, everyone. Still here? Woo! So we're going to talk about real life at work. And I'll first like to um, have our first panel, which is the product managers, to introduce themselves. Okay, let's start with here. Okay. Uh, hey, guys. My name is Doro. Um, I'm a product manager at Zalora right now. Um, my background is actually business studies, but my first job was as a video game tester. And that was a really great job, actually. A uh, great culture at that place as well. And that's why I stayed on at that company to become a pro project manager there. And that's where um, I got exposed to software development the first time. And I was talking to a friend of mine at the time who was a product manager. And that was a job that I had never heard of. Um, and when we exchanged a bit what our roles were, I realized that her role actually addressed a lot of the pain points that I felt in my own role. So she had a lot more to, to influence um, on the product and to choose the problems that she wanted to solve and how she wanted to solve them. And I found that really, really intriguing um, because my company was kind of corporate and also being a tester, you're very downstream, right? Quality assurance is kind of the last thing before go live. So yeah, I, I got really curious about it and I looked for openings and I applied and became a product manager and here I am. <laughs> Still at the same company actually after almost five years. Thank you. <laughs> um, thanks Doro. Um, I'm Iwan. I'm a pro product manager at Grab. But how I first got into the product manager role was actually from Shopee. So I joined as um, actually regional ops and I was um, a lot more involved in risk management because um, actually, honestly, I had to say that it has nothing to do with what I studied. Um, one thing or another, I wanted better opportunities. I wanted to go in tech as a non-tech person. So I found a position. And um, so happened that when I was working in that team, my product manager, whom I worked with, um, was going to go advance uh, his studies like to get an MBA. So he thought that I had all the qualities that um, could replace, um, basically could, could do what he was doing. So that's how I got you know, a confidence boost and went for that role and here I am today. Thank you. Hi, I'm Yiling from Honest Bee. The most re recent project that I worked on was Habitat by Honest Bee. Some of y'all might have visited it before. And how I got into product management was that I found my way to Silicon Valley and I fell in love with product management. I've never looked back since then. So how I found my way to Silicon Valley is a program by NUS, you know, where they actually post people to, you know, take entrepreneurship classes at Stanford. And you know, I also get to work at a startup there. So that was how I found my way towards product management. Yeah. Thank you. So let me start um, asking the next question for the product managers is you know, how does, um, what does it mean to be a product manager in your company? What do you actually do? Um, and has, you know, what kind of skill set do you look for when you are out there hiring for anyone who has no experience? What should they do? Mm, so product management is a role that kind of sits at the intersection of technology, business and design. And often you come in just having, you know, one of those areas a bit stronger or a really a strength and the others still need to be developed. Um, when you are in this role or what does it mean to be in the, at the intersection of it, right, is that you need to understand those business problems and try to solve them using technology and design. Uh, I think that's probably summarized it very much in a nutshell. Uh, maybe for the second part of the question. I yeah, so to build on Doro's answer, um, so I think you mentioned that you are at the intersection as a PM um, between um, tech, between your business teams, between your country operations teams, and a very, very important skill that is absolutely necessary is your people skill. Um, people, communications, um, basically, because as a PM, you, you are the owner of the product, you are responsible for how the product performs, so it is absolutely necessary for you to be able to adapt and talk to different kinds of people in their language to make sure that the product gets you know, shipped successfully and performs as intended. Yeah, so I, th I think communications is for sure always the quality I look for in any PM candidates. So some characteristics that I look for in hiring PM is having an analytical girl mindset and being a problem solver. And the third is you know, just doing what it takes to get shit done. Uh. 
So literally, you know, sometimes you are just fighting fires every day and sometimes, you know, you are saying that, oh, you know, my customers are really loving the product and day to day it really varies for a product manager and that's why it's really exciting. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And this panel is really for you guys. Um, unfortunately, we only have 10 minutes for each um, role. We have now about two questions for the audience. Do you have any question? Raise your hand up high. Yeah, we have one over there. Is there a mic? I, I can just shout it out. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you for the question. So uh, to repeat that, uh, her question was, what's the biggest challenge as a PM uh, that you think you face um, and you don't think anyone else in the industry, in the tech industry face? Um, and you know, anyone would like to share with, about that? Okay, maybe I can answer this question first. So I think as some of the speakers have said, you know, product manager sits at the intersection of business, you know, tech design. And that's where there's a lot of gray areas, right? So, you know, where does the line stop? Where do you draw the line? So sometimes one of the challenges is really finding the capacity to focus on the area that you think will have the biggest impact and really getting alignment from all the different teams because all the stakeholders have their different priorities. You know, the data teams wants a space to de deliver their data recommendations, you know, and then the design team wants to make their UI UX you know, improvements, so then how do you prioritize? That's the biggest challenge, I would say. Um, yeah, totally agree. Um, good summary also. Um, I think maybe communication that you man uh, mentioned was, you know, an important skill for us, I guess, to bring everyone on the same page, uh, speak everyone's language also to a certain extent. Um, you know, whether you talk to UX designers and you also need to know your customer, of course, as a product manager, or you talk tech and you want to at least know high level what, what you're talking about. I think the, the challenge is, yeah, to, to communicate well. Mm. Um, and actually, I think there are plenty of product management materials online. Um, you can definitely go on Medium, go on Tech in Asia, a ton of um, books that you can start reading as well. So I think a lot of things that actually we're covering now is quite... Um, easy to find online and accessible to everyone. But one thing that I want to say um, about the challenges question that we're talking about, um, uh, because I also just had a couple of screening calls yesterday, so I'm like still fresh from that. Um, so I think especially unique to uh, service agent tech companies, um, there tends to be a lot of changes all the time, be it from business, be it from regulations. Um, you don't see them coming. And they, when they come, you have to handle it. You have to handle any curveball that is thrown at you because, um, for example, you could have a product that's really developing 70%, and then something comes and say, hey, actually, we are doing this, you know, this is like, this thing just came out yesterday. It's all wrong. So I think um, the challenge actually, um, especially for a PM in Southeast Asia, is to be able to handle curveballs um, really well. Um, and that takes, I think, a fair amount of patience, um, skills, obviously communications, but of also um, a lot of um, man uh, managing expectations with different kinds of people who definitely don't immerse themselves in product management every day. So they also don't, are maybe not necessarily familiar with um, the things that you are facing. So as a product manager, um, you kind of have to be like that all rounder person um, to make sure that things um, suffer as little as possible uh, due to any of these changes. Thank you so much. Um, I think I will move on to the next uh, section and if you have any question when they get off the stage make sure you grab them all right so next up we have the web de developers well I think a lot of you may be able to imagine how that looked like but I think I would still like them to introduce about you know how a day for them is like and what actually excite them in the day uh, in, in their role um, in, in this uh, web development role um, so I'm Nico, I'm from TopWorks, I'm a software engineer. A typical day will be we start uh, with a scan up. So we scan around and we go one round talking about our updates, progress and any blockers. 
I think this is the most vital round in the day because you get to know if someone needs help or do you know something that someone else doesn't. And also as a team, you need to help each other in order to make the product. So it's not just about your personal progress, how fast you can finish a story cut. So in order to make a product, everyone has to be on the same page also. I think scan up is really important. And it should not just be about, I get this, I get that, but more about, like, do you need help? So you need to be a bit proactive in asking and also offering help in order to make the team great. Hi, I'm Phil from The Circus Life. And uh, as Nico said, the daily stand-up is important for the uh, everyday of the uh, software engineer life. I agreed on that. So uh, how stand-up uh, help our work? So in the stand-up, usually we talk about three things. Yesterday, what had we done? Today, what we are doing? And then uh, what will be the uh, blocker of the today? So that every, everyone in the standard will know that what will be the blocker. Being a senior, how to, uh, how to clear the blocker so that the teams will keep moving. Because uh, we, ha we are promising for the deliverable outcomes to the PM. So from the PM side, they will also uh, want to know that, is there any blocker in the team? Uh, will it affect to the deliverable outcome? And then also, at, at the start of the everyday walks, we will be uh, looking inside, is the blocker? If it is a blocker, we will contact to the PM, hey, there is a blocker, how to resolve it? And after that, we will keep progressing on the team uh, performance, and then at the end of the sprint, uh, we will achieve our deliverable outcomes. Thank you. So, well, I think for what you know, what you require to become a, a developer or a software engineer may be very different from any other role in the tech industry. So, um, and it always seems like there is a very high level of entry um, that you, you need to achieve. So what would be your advice to anyone who has no background and who wants to become someone like you? You know, what do you think is the hiring process right now? What would be your advice? Um, right. So a few questions, go The entry process, it actually depends on your own, um, I would say depend on your background and where you come from. So if you're a really struggling computer science, I would say the entry level will not be that hard. But if you're a career, uh, if you're doing a career switch, like you went to um, like coding academy and all sorts of that, right, the inertia would be higher because you're, entering a totally different industry. So that would be more difficult. Uh, what's the other question? If the CV really matter? Oh, um, so in the hiring process, I believe most of the tech company now proceed with a code assignment first. So your CV in the sense it matters, but not as much as I would say a traditional job nowadays. So you do have to submit your coding assignment. It needs to work and also it needs to look good and reusable in order for us to consider you for the next stage. Um, so I would say go and uh, get too bothered about your years of experience and CV and just try it out. Try the code assignment even if you don't think you are going to get the job because it's a very good practice. Uh, yes, from my point, so to become a software engineer, we need two types of skill. One is called a uh, hard skill, another one is called soft skill. So what is hard skill? So that is what we can learn from the university or any kind of the online courses. That will be the hard skill. So that is the fundamental. So we need the hard skill. And another one is what is the soft skill? Soft skill is a kind of uh, problem solving and analytical thinking. Being a software engineer, you are facing to the system who is uh, really using and there will be a complexity over there. If there is a complexity come at how you will be solving it, that is an analytical skill. So that kind of analytical skill is you can grow up along the way in your career. So uh, first of all, first we have to concentrate on how we can acquire the hard skill. So how to uh, first start uh, learning the programming first. So when you can uh, start um, doing the simple programming, and based on the what is your analytical skill, you can improve yourself to resolving the uh, complex, complex, complex problem. So I might say that two basic uh, hard and soft is a must have for the software engineer. All right, I guess to summarize, if you have no experience but you are learning, um, the CV don't really matter. There's going to be an assignment. So 
you know, a graduate of computer science um, and you who has just learned something from Coursera, you guys are going to go through the same process. Um, so don't be afraid if you think that your, you know, college certificate doesn't count. So now I have one more question that I can uh, get the floor to ask. Is there anyone who's interested in web development or software engineering who'd like to ask any question? Great question. So the, the question was, um, what is the language that I should start with? There are so many out there. Okay, so in order your uh, question, so uh, from my side, there is no language preference. So first thing first, if you know the pseudo language, let's say how to write a simple program, that will be a good start. So because every programming language, we start with the uh, variable declaration and after the for loop, this kind of thing. Every programming language is the same. It's just a matter of the sentence, sentence difference. So just get the uh, basic knowledge of the uh, how to write a simple program and after that, that will be your first start. Um, so I would say that if you're just gagging out, maybe try a course uh, online. Go for the one that teach you how to build a website from scratch meaning from all the way from planning, design, database, modeling, and such. So you really get a feel of how the process works and then decide for yourself, do you really like doing this? And once you, uh, you acquire the basic skills, like uh, what she said, then you move on to um, strengthen your basic skills. I, I would always say go and look at the language because there are just too many new tech and language to learn. But most likely go for like harden your basic, like understand what is a database, understand what how can you make something faster. Um, so the theories behind all the language are the same. So just apply them as such. Don't get too focused by the new language because if you keep switching languages to learn, you're not going to get very far in the journey, I would say. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so moving on to our last panel. And again, if you have more questions, once they get off the stage, make sure you grab them. We have the, our last panel, the, the data scientists. And I think I would like to start off with the first question to you know, tell us more about what you think is unique about data scientists. There are many people out there who are working with data in their own ways. It could be working you know, with data in Excel. They could be writing SQL. You know, they could be called data analysts. So what's unique about data scientists? Okay, probably I'll do a self-introduction first. I'm Roshi from Shopee. So currently I'm a data scientist focusing on recommendation system in Shopee. Uh, so regarding the question, what's uh, unique about data scientists as compared to DA or BA, um, I would say that uh, for DA and BA, they are, they are finding facts about data. But for data scientists, we need to deal with uncertainties. Um, maybe I give a real real life example. So for uh, the recommendation system that I have been doing in Shopee, it's like when you land on the product page, uh, we need to give a model which will recommend related products to you. But it's a, a very like uncertain topic because we can think of different strategies to recommend a product. It can be like the items that you recently view so that, that you will be more interested in it. Then it can also be that the products, like let's say you are viewing a dress, uh, now we can recommend for the high heel shoes that matches this dress, or we can recommend for the cosmetics. Then uh, for another strategy, it can be like we recommend similar products. So um, for for doing the modeling and uh, the engineering in data science, you need to deal with this uncertainty. Then um, maybe I go to DA in uh, in Shopee for an example. So after we do this recommendation model, our DA team will help us to uh, do the visualization and to compute the metrics about how, the mod or how good the model performance is. So most of the time, the metric is well-defined. So they are basically um, coming out with algorithms to find um, how to uh, most efficiently find the metrics that we want and how can we do uh, efficient visualization about the model tracking. So that's um, my thoughts about the difference uh, between DA and DS. Yeah. 
Hi, um, hi again. <laughs> I was part of the previous panel. So just a brief introduction. So I'm um, Janet. So I'm leading the big data and analytics team for Oracle in ASEAN. Um, so I think what differentiates or what makes it special, right? So on a day-to-day -day basis is that you've probably heard about the term like data science is the, the sexiest job, one of the sexiest jobs right now, right? So I think it's really, you know, um, being in a data science is data science field is more than just the technology skills and, and all the, you know, the tools that you use and the programming and all, but it's really about, you know, going and looking deep inside you, like what is that vision that you are trying to achieve and what is that output, you know? So if you have, I'm uh, just probably, um, 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 just a, sh a little bit of sharing about uh, myself, right? So I have this grand vision of, you know, being a when I was a kid, of being able to save lives and contribute to society. But unfortunately for me, I wanted to become a doctor, but I was afraid of blood. So I faint. I faint faster than probably the patient. So there's really no chance for me to become a doctor. So I thought, like, lucky for me, I have this love for numbers, right? And um, I thought that if I go to the engineering side, then I will have um, another means of saving lives. So that vision was in me throughout, right? So, and I thought that being in this data science field with all the advancement in technology, machine learning, artificial intelligence, you could do a lot with that good vision inside your heart. You could do into healthcare, you could do maybe even improving um, customer experience and all these various industries, right? So again, I think in data science, more than the technology itself, it's really that grand vision within you of what you want to do and that output that makes it really exciting. And once you have all these pieces together, I think, you know, regardless of how difficult writing algorithms are, coding, dealing with data, cleaning data, all these, I think with that passion in heart, it makes it very, uh, not very easy, but easier for you to overcome. So I think that's what makes it special. Yeah. Uh, hi. Uh, my name is Yen, and I'm a data scientist in Grab. Um, so I'm in the economics team, and my team focuses on uh, things like pricing and demand and supply positioning. Um, so I think um, to be a data scientist, uh, what makes it special is that other than being good with the data and analysis, um, you also have to be good in modeling, uh, as well as formulating a problem such that it can be eventually incorporated into the product or the business. Um, and in addition, you probably have to have also have a knowledge on building pipelines as well as um, data architecture. So it's more of like a full stack thing. Um, but on the other hand, for data analy analysts, I think they're very good at um, understanding the data and they know about the nuances of the data. So whenever I need to look at a new table and if I have questions, they're actually my go-to person. Um, and I think, um, in general, they are very good at visualizing and presenting the data to the business um, so that business users will be able to understand the data and um, digest it in bite-sized pieces. Yeah. Thank you. So looks like the business, uh, sorry, the data analyst works closer to the business and the data scientists, you know, work out with, you know, uncertainty and unpredict unpredictable stuff, right? So, um, well, the next question that I would be curious about is what could be the bigger challenge you think in your role as a data scientist? Um, and with that, what kind of skill set for anyone who wants to work with data, who wants to come into the data world, what kind of skill set do you think they should acquire um, to get into this? Um. I think the biggest challenge for me is actually customer education because I find uh, most of my customer they are like two extremes. One one extreme is they think that AI can do everything, so actually we are not the god. Then it's <laughs> it's it's very likely that we explore a model for one or two months, but it doesn't work. So there is definitely disappointment. Then the other extreme is that um, people think that we are just API users. So um, uh, they think that it's very similar to software engineering. Then uh, so we just basically call API, then we are able to do model very quickly if they give us the requirement. So I would say that uh, communication is very important and customer education is very important for data science. It's not just about technical. Yes. Uh, maybe just to add, um, um, I think 
open-mindedness is one of the key, very important things that you, you need to uh, look into data science. So, so she mentioned that education is one because people tend to think that we are doing magic, right? <laughs> so everything, we can solve everything. But as you go deep into the, the act of it, right, of doing data science and all, you will realize that, you know, every data set is different, every industry is different. Like basically, it's, everything is unique. So we'd have, you need to have that critical thinking and open-mindedness to go into the data science, to have that kind of strong will to do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, for me, I think the biggest challenge is to keep learning because there's actually a lot of new technologies coming out every day. Um, so you have to actually um, read, um, for example, things, websites like Medium or uh, research papers to keep yourself abreast with the new technologies. Thank you. Um, unfortunately, we don't have time, but since I'm holding the mic, anyone have a burning question you want to ask the data scientists on stage? No one? Yes, one question. Okay, so in a data analytics team, what is the difference between a data scientist and a data engineer? So um, I will repeat the question. What's the difference between, well, in definition, what's the difference between data scientists and data engineer? Is that right? Yeah. Um, I think it's company specific. So probably like I start with Shopee first. Uh, so for us, the data engineering, uh, they are doing the data warehouse, like uh, maybe they are user behavior tables and standard tables every day. So they are do basically doing the data aggregation daily. Then for us, uh, when a new model comes in, we also need to do data engineering. It's basically we extract data from those uh, standard tables. Then we need to do uh, the feature engineering, which is basically to do the data aggregation pipeline to get the feature that we want in order to go for production. So I would say there's overlap between uh, these two teams. Then uh, because I, my previous uh, working experience, I, the structure is a bit different. So even for the products, um, for the data science team, the data engineering pipeline is uh, done fully by the data engineers. So I would say it's company specific. If I may um, just add to that, I think the whole data science um, thinking has now evolved to include various aspects. Yeah? So one business is one, being having some skills in terms of the computer, like programming and all, and of course the math and statistics. So there's actually a fusion of these skills together. And at, the, at um, it work with the customers and all, the expectation is not so much now in silos, right? So if you are in the data science field, you are expected to basically understand the end-to-end -end process of understanding, even identifying what data sources you need to look into given an understanding of the business context, right? So that's a very important thing that you need to understand what business problems you're trying to address. And once that's clear, then you have to understand each step, right? So from a data engineering, data management, data handling, cleansing, transformation, to building the models, all the way to communicating the results, visualizing it and communicating the results and going back to why it didn't work. So that whole process, I think, slowly, slowly, that is becoming the trend. Yeah. Uh, so uh, my understanding is that data engineers are generally very good at um, building ETLs and pipelines, um, and they're good at architecture. Um, so uh, I'll just give you an example. So we work quite closely with um, the data engineers and data analysts. Um, so for example, when we want to productionalize a new table. So for example, um, GrabFood is a relatively new business for us. And so when we are trying to design the schema of the tables, we actually work very closely with the data engineers um, so that they can understand our needs and how uh, we want to use the data. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so we have come to the end of real life at work. While they are on stage, uh, anyone have question? Uh, keeping them on stage, you can just come forward. Uh, have a good lunch, and I'll see you in the afternoon workshop. <laughs>